Welcome to the home of 100 to 1 Faith TV, the place for amazing stories of abundant faith overcoming impossible odds. It's April 10th at Grace United Methodist Church, and I'm Larry Gent. It's Palm Sunday, and we're going to call this Inauguration Day for Jesus Christ. Please join me in the opening prayer. Hosanna in the highest, Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Open before us the gates of praise, so we may enter confessing in heaven and on earth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Our reading today is from Habakkuk, chapter 2. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation, make it plain on tablets, so a herald may run with it. For the revelation waits an appointed time, it speaks of the end, and will not prove false. Though it may linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. The stones of the wall will cry out. The beams of the woodwork will echo it. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Our Old Testament reading is from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The New Testament reading is from Philippians 2. In your relationships with one another have the same mind as Jesus Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Gospel lesson is from Luke 19. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began to joyfully praise God in loud voices 
for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Palm Sunday, 33 AD, was Inauguration Day for Jesus Christ. He did not ride in on a horse as a conquering hero might. He rode in on a donkey to show this was to be a peaceful transfer of power. On the streets of Jerusalem, observers were not so sure. Jerusalem was full of military presence, unpeaceful trappings of absolute power. For them, Jerusalem was a cash cow churning out money, and they had no intention of stepping aside. This ragtag little parade of children waving palm branches and people throwing their cloaks down into the road was certainly no threat to their reign, but the people shouting Hosanna didn't see it that way, and neither did the man riding on the donkey that day. As far as they were concerned, this was a transfer of power. In our nation, we have prided ourselves on that peaceful transfer of power. At least, at least we used to up until January 20th of 2021. On that day, the peaceful process was attended by 25,000 armed troops, armored barricades and no-fly zones. The Supreme Court was evacuated for a bomb threat and no one thought it was a bluff our peaceful transfer of power had become a battleground. This was not the first time the inauguration was attended by such military presence. The last time, the only other time, was the inauguration of Abraham Lincoln as the nation stood on the precipice of civil war. So, we can forgive the folks on the streets of 33 AD if they were afraid the arrival of Jesus might also unleash a civil war. They tried to warn Jesus, shh, be quiet. Tell them all to go simmer down. This could get ugly. But Jesus would not be deterred. It was time for a peaceful transfer of power, and this little parade would not be turned back. Everyone held their breath that day. Everyone except the crowd shouting Hosanna. No one knew what would happen next. They stared in disbelief as the parade proceeded straight to the temple, the exact same path the kings of Israel used to claim the throne. Israel already had a king on the throne, and he already had the permission of the military to sit there. What would the king say about this? What would the army say about this? What was Jesus going to do? The scene got a little bit violent as this peace candidate walked into the temple courts. He started kicking over tables and cracking a whip for good measure. There was electricity in the air, and that word hadn't even been invented yet. Anything could have happened next, but nobody was ready for what did happen. Jesus sat down. He started teaching Sunday school. And he did a little preaching. That's it. <laughs> That's a bit of a buzzkill. People were ready to riot. 
ready to call down lightning and thunder, ready for insurrection. And all they got was Sunday school? No inauguration speech, no laser beams and light shows, just teaching and preaching? It was almost as if Jesus really was looking for a peaceful transfer of power. If your memory is still active, you might recall last week we talked about the power of the gospel story. This is not a book of history about what Jesus did. It's a gospel account about what Jesus does do and is doing every day. Jesus still comes in peace. Oh, he might still upset tables of commerce from time to time, but only to get our attention. Nevertheless, make no mistake, peaceful or not, on this Palm Sunday today, Jesus still rides in and demands a transfer of authority, a peaceful transfer of power. He's not interested in taking over the mechanism of the temple. He's not going to push the king off his puppet throne. This Jesus is not interested in leading a puppet kingdom of any kind. Jesus is interested in just one thing, leading you. Last week, we also talked about honor cultures. In an honor culture, you are what others think of you. You are what other people say you are. So what do you say? Is Jesus in control of our world, of our nation, our homes, ourselves? And sometimes it can be hard to tell. Sometimes we answer the bell at the tables of commerce. Sometimes the barbed wire and armored cars arrest our attention. Sometimes it really looks like the lunatics are running the asylum. So we can be forgiven if we need to be reminded Jesus really is in charge. That's why he rides in peacefully, not just once in 33 AD, not just once a year on Palm Sunday. Jesus rides in peacefully every day. But make no mistake, he is still calling for an absolute transfer of power and authority. He is still calling for you to put Jesus in charge. Here in the church, we're not ruled by human authority. We are not fooled by earthly trappings of power. We are an honor society. Jesus is in charge here because we say so. Jesus is Lord here because we say so. Jesus is in power here because we say so. Luke told us about this as he described the parade in amongst all the shouts of Hosanna and palm branches waving. People were in that peaceful transfer of power because they couldn't stop talking about the miracles they had seen. When we tell each other, what Jesus has done, then the transfer of power is utter and complete. Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hosanna in the highest.